Rick Lagina and Gary Trayton are searching an area where they have made some of the oldest discoveries ever documented, not only on Oak Island, but in all of North America. You're about due for a coin, Gary. I am overdue a coin. Yes, a coin! One week ago, Gary, along with Rick, Marty, and their partner, Craig Tester. This is clearly Roman design. Roman, baby! <laughs> Unearthed four ancient coins in this area, making a total of five that have been discovered in the past year. Incredibly, three of these coins have been determined by numismatist Sandy Campbell to date between 500 AD and 300 BC, and to also be of Roman origin. Lot five is a complete mystery. It's a mystery in terms of the man-made constructs, uh, the kinds of artifacts that have come out of the ground. It's mystifying. Got to come out, because I don't know what it is. Right in the middle, mate. OK. Thank you, sir. Sounds a little bit better now. Mm -hmm. Come on, be something. Some kind of strap. And this looks like it, it goes down, like, to a point there and then down there. It's almost decorative, like a decorative strap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could be just something broken off of something else. Yeah, you know, a lot of these straps were around boxes or chests. That would be cool. There you go. I would imagine this is something to do with whatever that depression is over there. A strap, possibly from a box or chest? Could Gary be correct that it might be related to the nearby circular depression? Or might it possibly be connected to the numerous Roman coins that the team has found in this area? That CT scanner will give us a good view of this. At that point, you no longer have to speculate as to what it is. You speculate as to its purpose. Yeah. The information that Emma and the uh, CT scanner will provide might be very highly revealing what it means to the feature on Lot 5. You can't argue with the science. It will be what it will be, and hopefully that information connects up to the greater mystery. Let's see if we can rustle up another find. <laughs> we have got something in this area. I mean, let me just brush the stuff away and then take another swing, right? Not sure what it is. It's this side of that root. Oh, wow. It's not the easy one. I think it's it. Could be iron. It is iron. Chunky iron. Look at that. Heck is that? No idea. Heavy? Oh, yeah, it's heavy. Well, I believe this is some kind of fastener by the look of it. Mm -hmm. And it could be a rosehead type fastener. It's old. A lot of that old hand forged iron tends to be on the heavy side. Well, we're close to the most prominent feature on the Lot 5, right? And if there was a structure, what do you need to put a structure together but fasteners, right? Yeah. Why are we finding bits of iron on lots where significant finds are made is very strange given the fact that iron was a, a valuable resource and you wouldn't just waste it. So what is the explanation as of yet? I don't think we know. And these are the type of things that you show at Carmen and you never know it could be more than what we believe it is. Adding to the story on lot five. Yep. Emma's gonna be busy. The following morning, 
There he is. How are you? Carmen? Hey, Carmen, how are you? Not too bad. Rick Lagina and members of the team meet with blacksmithing expert Carmen Legg at the Oak Island Interpretive Center. As you see, we've got a bunch of items here that have been recovered from a specific lot of interest. Uh, you see that? Carmen has been invited to examine some of the artifacts that were recently discovered on Lot 5. Um, I think I'll go over to this one here now. I'll give you a little bit of context on the chunky piece of iron found on Lot 5. And when it first came up, I knew it was old because it's nice and heavy. And it just had a feel like it was some kind of broken tool to me or fastener. It's very old. This is much older. Could we have a uh, scan of that? I need to see the head. The head, yeah. From what I see there on the head, there, it looks like it was broken end off of something. Yeah. It looks to me like it could be some sort of a chisel. Yes. It just could be a tool that could be used for mining or tunneling. Wow. And with the size that you've got in your hand, mate, how much bigger would it have been? Lengthwise, it would probably be looking at a foot. If it's shorter than that, again, it might not be long enough to fulfill the yeah. purpose of what you want it for. Could we see the metallurgy, Emma? Sure thing. No modern elements. Potassium and calcium, so it's, it's an older metal. That's good. So we've got a lot of old fasteners and tools and more to come, mate. Yeah, I'll go with this one here next. Ooh. It looks like a bow tie strap. You can see how it's You can see of, the bow tie. Yeah, you can see What's the, a bow tie strap? It was a decorative piece that had decoration to it. So it would be narrow or wide, narrow or wide, all the way around to decorate a chest. Oh, and, so specifically chest decoration? Yeah, wooden boxes and chests. OK. Uh, that's exceedingly interesting. Is there a cultural influence? Yes. French. Really? Yeah. Wow. This decorative strap indicates earlier French. So to me, it indicates the French were here first and then the English. A decorative strap from a chest? One that is not only possibly of French origin, but may also predate the 17th century? If so, who brought it to Oak Island? We found important artifacts that have been French. We can't forget, of course, the lead cross, where the testing has indicated that the lead came from the southern part of France. Yeah, don't get any better than that. It's curious that this stuff is found near an area on the Xena map that is a French map that is a possible location for a hatch. In 2016, the late author and researcher Zena Halpern presented maps of Nova Scotia and Oak Island featuring French writing and what she believed had been created between the 12th and 14th centuries by members of the Knights Templar. This led Zena to theorize that Oak Island had been visited numerous times by the Templars and related organizations, such as the Freemasons, in order to hide sacred valuables. Is it possible that the discoveries made by Rick, Marty, and their team, such as the lead cross and the numerous finds on Lot 5 that predate the discovery of the money pit, offer mounting evidence that Zena's theory is true. We have long puzzled about the possibility that these French items, the lead cross and Zena's map, were associated with some depositional work. I have always believed that this work on Oak Island, the original depositional work, was started incredibly early. We just have to fill in the gaps more precisely, more accurately, more definitively. But it's very interesting. The artifacts you've shown me over the years is very unique. There's artifacts coming out of Oak Island that I haven't seen anywhere else. That's the reason for this type of analysis. What we're trying to do is come to an understanding of what the item represents in terms of the complexity of the story on Oak Island. It, it's not a simple process. Makes me want to get back to Lot 5 and find some more. Well, let's have at her. That's why we have a lot more to dig. We have a lot more to excavate. All I can say, Carmen, is thank you. Appreciate it. See you later.